For Krima Media's Policy, I'm Sane Lameni, researcher and analyst, Professor Ramon Sadna, joins me for Sadna's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. In your book, Recovering Democracy in South Africa, you place a lot of weight on respect for legality and constitutionalism. Is there not a danger that we rely on the courts to resolve what are political issues? Yeah, there have been some people, when I've launched this book, who have suggested that we are now asking the Constitutional Court to do our work mm. to solve political problems. And I think it, it's a bit of a crudification because I think w w what I'm saying is not that we must necessarily go to the courts about everything, but that we have a constitution and we really need people to understand that the law and the constitution under apartheid were, was completely different from what we have today. You had a rights-denying constitution, a constitution and a legal system that was actually endorsing the humiliation, the robbing of dignity, uh, the denial of rights to the majority of the population. Now you have a constitution that stands above everything else and it actually uh, entrenches the freedom of all. Now, if that is the case, it's very important that we must give full weight to that. At the same time, I do agree that there is a sphere of activities which is government and politics, and that is separate from the courts. We shouldn't be taking issues that can be resolved politically to the courts. And that is why I think when the DA or was it Ahang took the uh, parliament to court over a vote of no confidence, uh, Judge Dennis Davis was very, very careful to limit his judgment because he said it's very important that we observe the boundaries between the sphere of operation of the courts and the sphere of operation of politics. And he had written before about what he called lawfare. Uh, in other words, where you use the courts as a site of political battle. And the courts have to be very careful about that. It's a bit like um, there's a famous book on war by Clausewitz where he says, War is the conduct of politics by other means. Now, courts mustn't be the conduct of politics by other means. They must really just, they must really say, these are the limits of legality. By doing this or not doing that, you actually have infringed on the rights of people. I think it's also important for us to realize that the legal system that we now have is not just defending us from assaults and uh, state invasion of our house. It's got a socio-economic component. If you don't have water, if you don't have electricity, if you don't have housing, the, the Constitution obliges the state to provide that to the population. So once you have exhausted these other remedies going to the various departments of government, you can go to the courts about those issues and there have been court cases which have found that government must provide these things. So it's very important that we should uh, not be shy of using the courts, but at the same time we must recognize that there is a separation of power. But accepting that there is this value in constitutionalism, what are we to do when the government has no intention of carrying out recommendations of the public protector? Yes, well, the first answer is you can possibly you can go to court, <laughs> <laughs> uh, which I'm saying now one shouldn't be going so quickly. However, if you reach a stalemate in, in Kandla, for example, where government 
has refused to address the findings of the public protector as they are obliged constitutionally to do to at least look at this, those recommendations, explain why they are not following them. Instead what they're doing is they're following their own process, ignoring the public protector. And I don't think we must focus on the public protector as the only factor. It is the constitution itself that is being undermined when you don't follow the procedures that are meant to safeguard the rights of the citizens. And we also learn from that case that um, government has been unwilling to follow the law. It's not just a political obligation to hold people accountable. It's not just a good thing. It's not just something that is worthy, that we admire in some systems and not in others. It's actually what they swear in the oath of office to do. But as citizens, I think it's very important that we should find ways of um, addressing this um, through a number of fora, and I've said this very often before, that where politics fails, we shouldn't only leave it to the courts. If constitutionalism and holding people accountable is a valuable quality, then it's very important that we as citizens, wherever we are, some of us are in faith-based organizations, some of us are professionals, some of us are just ordinary people in the street. Uh, we need to find ways of combining our efforts to entrench the value, not um, to ward off these uh, actions that are endangering hard-won constitutional democracy. Thank you, Professor. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's policy about handling too many political questions to the courts.